How do you keep a conversation going? This is something that gets brought up a lot for the people who consume my content. And the issue here is this idea of awkward silence. Now, most of the time, if you're asking, how do I keep a conversation going? It's most likely in a scenario where you're with people that you don't know at all or you don't know very well. Could be a forced situation like a networking event at work. Maybe it's a Christmas party. Maybe it's a, a friend's gathering, but you know, it's a bunch of friends of one person, but all of you don't know each other. And how do you keep that conversation from hitting this radio silence that starts to feel like it's never going to end? Well, there are a few things that you can do to optimize this situation. And it's really a pattern of conversation that you can learn that will help to serve you in all kinds of situations. So being able to talk about the event, being able to talk about something that's physically in the room, and being able to talk about the people who you're speaking with are going to be three really key opportunities for you to pick up that conversation and to keep it going. Talking about the event. So maybe this is a networking event or maybe it's a wedding and you're mingling. Maybe you're a friend of the bride or the groom and it's the reception and you're mingling with a lot of people that you don't know very well. But... It's a wedding, so it's probably going to be somewhere that's really pretty. And being able to talk about that, being able to talk about that it's inside or outside or what time of year it is, or maybe this is a very old church and you're, you're saying, oh, what a beautiful church. I bet there's so much history here. Or maybe they've got married outside. Isn't it so nice that they've had an outside wedding? I love that the weather held out. Everything was so beautiful. Or... I love that they had an outside wedding, but it sure was hot. I'm glad we're inside now for the reception because I was starting to feel like I was going to melt out there. You're not saying negative things. You definitely don't want to get into this um, habit of saying negative things. It's not, oh, it was so hot. I can't believe they did that. What a terrible decision. It's, I'm glad that the weather held out, but I'm also glad that we're inside in the air conditioning now. Can you tell I'm drawing from my own experience of a friend's wedding I went to a few years ago? Um, so talking about the venue, talking about how beautiful the bride looked maybe, or you know the host did such a good job with their speech earlier, I thought that it was really sweet or really moving. Or uh, I'm so glad that we're all here for whatever it is. Maybe it's a networking event and you're just saying, I'm glad that so many people could make it here today. It's really fun when so many different vendors show up because there's so many neat things to check out and learn and discover. So you're having these, these conversations that just have to do with, it, it should always be positive. Even if you're bringing up something that's not super positive, like a wedding in July that's 100 degrees outside with no shade, but if you are harping on something negative, it's going to make people very uncomfortable, especially if they don't know you. This is a very, very awkward social cue when you're speaking with strangers. Now, if it's you and your best friend of 20 years and you want to joke about how much you were both sweating underneath your bridesmaids dresses, okay. But we're not going to talk about that with guests who you don't know very well, right? So that's talking about the venue or the event. You could also talk about things in the room. So I do this constantly when I'm working in home health. Uh, I'm meeting people for the first time all the time. My job is to get them set up with therapy and to hand the visits off to my therapy assistant to do most of those regular visits. And I come back and see that person a month later. And then I come back and see them a month later. So I'm not getting to, to know them as well as when I used to work more one-on-one -on -one with people. So I'm doing this all day, every day of meeting people for the first time. I'm trying to learn about them. I'm trying to assess them for their therapy needs. I'm trying to do as much paperwork as I can at the same time. And I'm trying to build rapport with them. It's a lot of things to juggle at once. But it's important to me that the patient doesn't just stare at me while I'm checking boxes on my computer. So being able to keep this conversation going while I'm multitasking 
is something that's just important to me. And I think that it helps a lot to build rapport quickly with people who I'm not going to get to see very often. So I will bring up things like pictures on the table. I might ask, oh, are these your kids? Uh, or maybe their grandkids. Sometimes you can tell by the age of the picture um, that these were maybe their children, but the picture was taken a very long time ago. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite things is when my patients who are in their 70s, 80s, and 90s have wedding photos out. I love, is this you two at your wedding? Oh my gosh, you were so young. I love it. How old were y'all when you got married? That dress is just gorgeous. I saw this dress the other day. I said, you look like Queen Elizabeth. I, I can't I can't even deal with how gorgeous you are in this. I mean, oh, the tiara, the veil, the lace, the boat neck, the, the sleeves. I was just dying. She looked so pretty. And it was such a fun, she said, do you know you're the first person who's ever walked down this hall and seen that picture and, and said anything about it? People love to talk about memories, about, oh, I know they were so little then. They're in their 50s now. You know, people, it's, it's such an easy thing. If they've got those pictures out on display, that's a pretty safe topic. Maybe you're not in somebody's home. Maybe there's not a lot of pictures around. But maybe you're in a place where there's a neat piece of furniture or architecture. I love, I just love architecture and I love historic, you know, maybe there's a, a really beautiful clock or a really beautiful, um, you know, a, a side table or um, maybe there's some really beautiful decorative trim. I don't mind to say, oh my goodness, did you get a chance to look? I mean, how amazing is the trim in this room? It's so beautiful. I just love things like that. And it's not that I'm going to get obsessed about the trim in a room, but it opens up the conversation to talk about maybe architecture or about other places that you visited that have had really interesting features. You know, this kind of reminds me of this other place that I went on this trip to France where da-da-da, and you see how you've picked something that was right there in the moment, but you, you could take that conversation anywhere you want. So you don't want to get overly obsessed about architectural details in a room that you're standing in. But it can help to pick an element that you think is really neat and tie that in to anything, another beautiful place that you've been. It doesn't have to be, oh, this exact same um, you know, wall sconce was hanging on this, this, you know, church in Brussels. And, you know, it doesn't have to be that exact. You're just commenting on something in general and very generally applying it to something else. This room is really beautiful. It reminds me of this other beautiful room I was in one time. Or it, you know, kind of, it's got a very uh, European sort of feel in here. It's really neat. It kind of reminds me of when I went to this place. So you you don't get obsessed or you don't dive really deep into something like that. You use it as a launching point to take that conversation somewhere else about something that's maybe a little easier for you to talk about because it's more familiar. So that would be examples of picking things in the room. The last thing would be the one that we all hear about, you know, just chatting about other people and really seeming genuinely engaged, right? You can't just say, what do you do for a living? And they say, oh, I do this. And you go, okay, cool. Because then they're thinking, well, why did I even tell you? I actually had a roommate in college who was the worst at this, and it would make me so, honestly, it would just make me so irritated that I would just think, why do you ever even ask me anything anyway? Because she would say, how was your day today? And I'd say, oh, it was really great. I did, you know, I got to play tennis with so-and-so. And by the time I got that far into it, she was like, okay, cool. And she was like walking off or on her phone or totally distracted. And I would just think, why did you even ask me that question if you didn't want to hear the answer to it? You know, so don't give people that impression. Don't do that. To people. If you're going to ask them a question and they're going to answer it, make sure you're continuing to stay engaged in that conversation. Um, that particular relationship got to the point where it didn't matter what she asked me. I was going to give her a one word answer and walk off because I had nothing. I had nothing to give because there was nothing there. 
And I had I'd been met with that a handful of times. And that was all it took. I was like, well, we can just live together in total silence for the rest of the year for all I care. I'm not interested in talking to you because you make me, it actually makes me feel worse. I would rather you just ignore me completely than to ask me a question and the, and I get three seconds into answering it and you disappear. That's so insulting. <laughs> so don't do that to people. If you're going to ask them the questions, you need to look, have a look on your face that's like, oh, that's cool. Okay, I didn't know about that. You can tell them, I don't know anything about that. How did you get involved in that? You don't have to know anything about what they're telling you to continue engaging that conversation. And it is more than okay to tell them, you know, I'm not really familiar with that. Can you tell me more about how it works? Or I've never even heard of that. How did you hear of that job? And you're at your, your energy is that you are very interested and that this is something that you're curious about, something that seems interesting, something that you want to know more about. And it engages that other person to tell you. It could be a really cool story, a job you've never heard of. Please tell me the story. I've never even heard of that position. How did you get into it? Or I don't know a thing about that, but it sounds really interesting. Did you always want to do that? Was that something that you always thought you would do? Or was it something you just kind of made your way into? And it will let that person tell about themselves. And you would do well to have a few conversation topics in your back pocket that that are always well received. So for me, A few things that always are well received pretty much no matter where I go are talking about my kids. It's kind of an easy one. Oh, I have two boys. They're so much fun. They, you know, they just had their birthdays or, you know, they're so excited because we're going on vacation next week. They can't even stand it or, oh, they're on fall break this week. And so they're just living large, not having to go to school this week. You know, anything like that is generally just very well received because it's an easy topic. It's a fun topic. People like to hear funny stories. Um, I'm not going to sit here and detail out every grade they got on math tests this year, right? You want to just keep it kind of fun and kind of general. Uh, But my, my boys are a ton of fun. They're easy to talk about. And I tell the story in such a way that is engaging you know, for other people. I'm not going to stay on that forever, though, because nobody wants the whole conversation to be me talking about my kids. So I also have some things that I can talk about my book. I could talk about my course. I could talk about my work in home health. Uh, I could talk about a vacation that we went on last year or one that we're planning later this year. Um, those sorts of things, maybe big family get togethers, um, but you're not diving deep into the details of exactly when you're going or how much something costs or, you know, you want to keep it in those more engaging uh, topics and more engaging details It's really neat to hear about how I'm going to go on a cruise to these islands and we're planning on doing these couple of excursions. It's not so interesting to hear about, you know, how much I paid and what the tax surcharge was this year for fuel versus last year or um, detailing every single cruise I've ever been on and every single island I've ever visited Does that make sense? When it starts to feel like you're cataloging things, starts to feel like you're just giving these very random details on a fact sheet, those sorts of things can feel really dry and uninteresting and can make the other person feel like, why are they telling me this? It's much more engaging to talk about a fun plan that's coming up in the future that you're really excited about than to detail out these 15 different things that happened in the past to you that are kind of no longer relevant because that vacation was done. Now, being able to say, oh, we love going on cruises. We've been on nine cruises, you know, that might be okay. But we're not going to sit here and and detail out every single detail. Does that make sense? So I hope that this gives you three broad but perfect topics to talk about when you're trying to keep a conversation going with someone. You might want to talk about the venue, wherever it is that you are. 
You might want to talk about things that are in the room that you find interesting and maybe relate those to other similar, loosely related topics. Or asking that person about themselves in a way that's interesting and engaged. Perfectly fine to admit that you have no idea uh, anything about the type of job that they do. That's fine. It's In some ways, that's actually kind of interesting for them because they get to explain it in a, in a different kind of way than meeting a colleague who does the same job and now they're just kind of talking shop, you know? So it actually works out really well to, when you honestly admit, I don't actually know anything about that job that's so interesting. How did you get into that field or how does that work exactly? Or what are some of those things that you're doing on a daily basis? I can't even imagine. And just let them tell about themselves. It's also a good idea to make sure that you've got a few things in your own back pocket, things that you can talk about, about yourself. They don't have to be perfect. Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you, you know, really, really enjoy uh, knitting and you've got a great group of friends that you like to get together with on a regular basis and you meet at a coffee house and, you know, chit chat while you're knitting and drinking coffee. That's fun. You know, we don't have to get into all the details of every tiny little project you've ever worked on, but maybe whatever your current project is would be neat, or whether maybe you're planning a really big project for the next couple of months, that's neat to talk about. So it doesn't have to be kids. It could be anything. We just got a new puppy. Oh, what kind of puppy? Oh, he's getting into this. Oh, I just, you know, taught him this trick or whatever it is. So have a few little things in your back pocket that are kind of fun or interesting. They don't have to be mind blowing. They don't have to be the, the most interesting thing in the whole world. You don't have to tell a story that nobody's ever told before. You're just sharing about yourself. It doesn't have to have more pressure behind it than that. I hope that this has helped you a lot because this is a topic that I get asked about a lot. And so um, if it has helped you, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have other topics that you would like to make sure that I cover for future videos, I'm just a DM or an email away. I love to hear from you and I love to know that I'm creating the content that you want to see. And there's no way for me to know if you don't tell me. So please leave a comment or send me a DM and let me know what I can do for you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you next week.